a lot of negative energy, like doomsday, like Austin is a decline in market, you know, <laughs> realtors are never going to get paid. Again. And I'm like, you know, every time there is change, that means there is an opportunity for you to grow more and make more and overcome it. Hello and welcome to Keeping It Real, the podcast where we talk to the most interesting people in real estate and we, I say this every time, have a good one for you today and we're live, live in person, which makes it an extra special episode. So first of all, I'm your host, Chris, uh, and this podcast is brought to you by Real Geeks, but we're going to talk about them later. With me is Eamon. So, Eamon, we've been having a great chat here, warming yeah. up, and we're like, oh my God, we got to like push record early <laughs> uh, and like d not give away all the good stuff. But why don't you walk us through your background a little bit and, you know, how you found yourself in real estate? Yeah. So, you know, I was originally born in Baghdad, Iraq, uh, came here in 2012. But ever since I was three years old, like, I always just had a passion for entrepreneur entrepreneurship. Yeah. Uh, you know, like watched a lot of movies, Leonardo DiCaprio, like just a lot of business movies. Yeah. And like, you know, being in Iraq and just seeing this and like how they're living the American dream and they start from nothing and they build their way up and like they become successful. But then they always have like the crash. <laughs> so that's something I always like, I'm not going to have the crash. <laughs> I'm going to prevent it. <laughs> right. But yeah, that's kind of like what motivated me to be an entrepreneur uh, you know, did a lot of theater for eight years, you know, acting, uh, had a lot of different jobs and sales. But when I was about 14 years old, I, uh, I met a lady at a gym and she was a realtor and she was my girlfriend, Jaslyn's mom, best friend. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we were just talking to her at the sauna. <laughs> she sits there for an hour and then she was just kind of talking about how many deals she's doing and how much money she's making. And I was like, so did you go to college for this? And she was like, no, just got my license and I worked hard. Right. And, you know, I was like 14, uh, trying to live the American dream, trying to figure out what am I going to do with my career. Right. I knew college was not it. Mm -hmm. Like I just, it was in my thing. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's how it started. And then from the age of 14 till about 18, when I got my license, I just shadowed different agents, reached out to different brokerages, asked them to like shadow, uh, you know, get free courses, you know, just go and look at them doing the open houses or like just watch them make calls. And I even called Trek like when I was 17 and I was like, hey, is there a way where I could get my license before I turn 18? And they ended up giving me a coupon for an <laughs> aceable agent. And they were like, no, we can't do that. But here's a coupon. You could get 50% off. And right. yeah, I did aceable agent and then I did like uh, champion but I just didn't like the virtual. But this is like a, almost an unusual story because, you know, we we have this like sort of behind the scenes saying that we talk about a lot where it's like, you know, real estate's usually people's like second act. Yeah. You know, and you're an unusual case where it's like sounds like the first thing that you wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get into like, you know, sort of your high level numbers and like the way that you're making all that happen, like we were talking about um, we were talking about like your background, like your sales background leading up to that. So yeah. if you knew at 14 that you wanted to be a real estate agent, you know, what, what were you doing as you were like working your way in that direction, waiting the, the painful four years before you could get your license? Yeah, it was weird. Like once I figured out that's what I want to do, then I kind of just made all my plans towards that. So yeah. I was like, what can I do right now until I'm old enough for me to get my license and get into the industry? I was like, okay, let me get as many different jobs and sales in hospitality and in different industries because I'm young and I don't need to like get tied up to them for 20, 30 years. Right. So like every six months I was getting two different jobs. I was always working two to three jobs at a time while balancing school and sports. So I was like <laughs> working all day outside of school and sports and then, you know, sleep for like two, three hours, shower, change in the football locker room. And then like go to practice, work out, school, then leave school, go to work. Yeah. But so, yeah, I worked at hotels for hospitality. You know, I was yep. like customer service, wanted to understand the ins and out. Worked at Costco membership, worked in fast food, uh, did a little bit of the scooters 
the electric scooters, the okay. bird scooters. Yep. I was picking up about 150 of them by myself, like from 10 p.m. And that's sort of like a side hustle type thing because you take those and charge them, right? Yeah. Yeah. But with the scooter job, I was literally doing scavenger hunting across Austin. So I got to learn that every single street in Austin, I got to memorize all the different areas. And then I was seeing like where people are moving. Right. Like, you know, like I used to go pick up like 10, 15 scooters from Airbnbs on the east side. And I'm like, oh, this is really nice. There's about 10 scooters outside of this home. So that means like this area is close to downtown. You know, like I should, you know, drive around. Or if I see like a beat up, tore down home, I used to just write down the address and notes even though I didn't know what I'm gonna do with it. Like, I don't know who to call. I don't know, like, I just like, let me write it down. You know, let me just find every single crappy home yeah. and write it down. So whenever I know what to do with it, you know, I have a list ready. Um, I worked at the Austin proper, you know, like JW Marriott. So the, so the scooter job, like yeah. obviously like build a mental map of Austin. Walk me through like, when you're walking or working at some of the other jobs, what like skills you accumulated that have later been helping you in your real estate career? Costco membership, like we have about a thousand people walk yeah. in every hour. Yeah. And I'm like, tr I probably signed up about 20 to 40 membership a day easily. Mm -hmm. But I talked to like two to 300 people. And my job was to sell them the credit card and the membership, the $120, uh, not the right. 60 bucks. Right. Uh, so like I've heard every single no, I've heard every single excuse, and I had to learn how to maneuver around that. Right. And that's why like now when I'm in real estate, every time somebody tells me no, or you know, come up with an excuse, or like just I see that, you know, hesitation from them, I'm like, I know how to handle it. Like right. you know the three questions, the follow up questions, you know, or like, why are you not ready? Why do you not want it? Like, is it the wife? Is it, yeah. you know, a personal thing? Is it the credit? Right. So like, it's just a, that really shaped me up when talking to three, four different hundred people a day. It's just, it's a whole different job. Was Costco providing any like coaching on how to sell these things? Or were you in the background, like doing research on how to get better? <laughs> To be honest, like they did do some kind of, co they did do coaching and classes. Costco does a great job of that. But for me, like I'm just a very quick learner. Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person that I don't want to be in a classroom. I don't give me something with words to yep. learn off of. I want you to do it in front of me. And I want to see that how you do it. And then I'm just going to sit there, observe it, observe it. And then I'm just going to do my own touch to it and go from there. So at Costco, I first started out in the food court, actually, like slanging hot dogs, you know, <laughs> and pepperoni pizza uh, because like they weren't hiring anybody. And I was right. like, you know what? Let me just get into the door. Yeah. And then five months later, it's rare for somebody to go from food court to membership because it was kind of like a high end job at Costco. Right. But I talked to the manager, you know, every day, like when we were closing, I just made sure to have a conversation with him get close with him, talk to him, share with him my story. I always did extra work, stay, you know, hour or two late and just did like all the dirty work that nobody wants to do. Proof right. to him that like, this is what I want to do. So you were demonstrating a level of commitment. So there's almost like a multiple level of like, you know, 3D guess or chess game that you're playing there, you know, just to get into the position that's going to give you the skills that you wanted. Exactly. Yeah. I don't take no for an answer. And, you know, playing sports taught me doing the dirty work will get you yeah. further than just doing the minimum and like the work that everybody else wants to do because nobody else wants to do that. And right. if I'm the one person that does this work and make turn it into a success, then like that's going to make me feel better than just taking something easy and just like, you know, doing a little bit of work and to getting the credit for it. Okay, so any other jobs that, like, I mean, you talked about hospitality. Yeah. Uh, that had to be good, like, customer service, you know. It, it was crazy. Like, uh, I remember, like, working at the proper, I was, like, valet. Uh, and then I went and worked at a uh, La Quinte as a overnight shift. But the proper was one of the craziest experiences of my life. Because, really? yeah, like, it was a very high-end place. And, you know, we had Elon Musk uh 
I don't know if I should be sharing people private places <laughs> where they go, but like we've had very yep. high end people going in there, like yep. Elon Musk, Joe Rogan, Serena, yep. Serena Williams, Ezekiel Elliott, like every single big person that comes to yep. Austin goes to the proper. And I was there and like I got to valet their cars, got to see how they talk. And what's funny is they had a real estate conference there and I snuck in and a lot of the people that I valet their cars now I see at these events or like, you know, I call them up and I'm like, Hey, I'm going to show your listing. And it was like all strategized. I was like, let me yeah. go to the proper where the high end people go, all the people with money, you know, like real estate tech and just hear them, like hear what they're talking about. And like these people used to come out drunk at the end of the night. And I just ask them a question about like what they do, their industry. And they just love talking about it. Yeah. So I got to like, get a lot of education from different people in different industries and higher levels. And that kind of helped me as well, like keep being motivated and reach my goals. Well, it's again, back to the knowing that you wanted to do it allowed, seems like it allowed you to chart this path mm -hmm. that, you know, you were able to navigate your way into situations where, you know, you were either acquiring skills or meeting people that were going to pay off later. Exactly. Yeah. And to be honest with you, like doing all these things, I didn't know if I was doing the right thing because like everybody was like, you're not going to college, you're not doing that, you're just working all the jobs, you know, like, but you know, my girlfriend, Jaslyn, she believed in me and you know, she always like told me like, if this is what I want to do, then, you know, to stick to it. And she always coached me through it. And like every time, like I didn't feel like doing it or I just felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. And it just seemed like my plans are not working. She always reminded me like, hey, you got this. If there's anybody that could do it, it's to you. And she's been a big help. Okay, so you turn 18. Yeah. You take the courses, take the test, get your license. Now what? Yeah, I was actually working at UFCU. Okay. Bank teller. That was my yep. last job Yep. before I got into real estate. And that was part of the plan. I was like, where do everybody go? money with money banks where do people go get loans banks where do people save their money for the house banks so <laughs> i went and got a job as a teller and uh that's where i started getting a few leads my job my goal was to go there get into the lending department get licensed and then get my real estate license that way i could be licensed in both departments right but right. ufcu they told me it's a five-year process for me to to get into their lending program. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I just... It's like a undergrad and a master's degree, <laughs> you know? Yeah, which is like, you know, UFCU is a very, you know, yep. amazing credit union. And, you know, that's why, like, it's great. You know, they have steps and they have different, you know, levels for you to reach before the, you could, like, become a lender. You know, it's mm -hmm. one of their higher departments. Right. So I was at the bank... And I was talking to people, asking them about, hey, I see you're taking out $4,000 out of your house account. Are you like looking to sell? You're renovating? And it was just, you know, I was like, let me just try that out. And I managed to get about four leads from the bank, 10 in total, but four that I was able to stay in touch with, nurture. Yeah. And um, that's where it kind of started my launch into real estate because I was at ACC, Austin Community College, Job. Hammond, most amazing professor, like he's changed my life. I always tell people ACC is the place to be if you want to get into real estate. Interesting. Okay. Very great program. Yep. Very great professors. And he helped me. What, what was he professor of? You know, the contract or the code of ethics. Right. So each professor would teach different course. Sean, sounds like we need to have him on. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> should definitely have Job on. He's the smartest person I've ever met. And he's the most amazing person. If you look at his, like, uh, Trek courses, I think it's literally, like, 10 pages. Like, you have to keep skipping for how much credits he has. Hmm. Uh, so he used to bring a bunch of different agents, lenders, brokers, title reps into class. And they used to talk to us about what they're doing during this day or, like, giving us live feedback right. and live you know, education from people who are actually doing it, not an online course talking about peanuts and comparing it to real estate. 
Like that really annoyed me. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't want that. Pretty so sure. ACC had a, de- a real estate dedicated course. Yes. Okay. You go there. You spend twelve hundred bucks, and you get the and you get your. It takes about three months for you to get your license through them. Gotcha. Okay. And you could get your master's in real estate. Was that like full time, part time? Like how much time was spent like in the classroom? One day a week, because the way I did it is I had two classes, one uh, one on Tuesday, 6 p.m., and one on Thursday, 6.30 p.m., and then the other three were all line. There you go. I just wanted the hardest ones in person and the rest online. And, yeah, I was juggling three jobs in that. So it was a little bit crazy. Like, I'm working 18 hours and then go to ACC and then... I'm like, am I really going to do this? Like, it was just very challenging times for right. me. A little bit of a tangent here. Do you think that that experience was harder than what you experience now? Or do you think it was it was just ramping you up for what you experience now? Ramping me up. Yeah. Because, like, real estate is nothing that people made it sound. And it was right. nothing that I expected. You know, right. like... Like, I'm going to get into real estate, get to be a boss of my own schedule, yeah. you know, do whatever I like, make yeah. a lot of money, you know. But I always understood the hard work that comes with sales. And, you know, right. we're selling the, a very expensive item. Uh, so it's like, I think it was easier for me before I got into real estate than now. <laughs> yeah. I always thought that was the hardest phase of my life. Right. But in reality, it's like, no, I haven't even started. Yeah. That was just a little warm up compared to what I'm walking into. <laughs> I totally agree. I mean, that matches, you know, this is, again, a little bit off topic, but that sort of matches my college experience where at the time I was like, oh, this is pretty hard. <laughs> um, and like I'm I'm being forced to work hard and because I, I worked and went to school as well. Um, but... Yeah, once you're in the real world, you're like, oh no, that was that was the warm up lap. Yeah, like, and now we're running. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I and I just feel like I'm not even at ten percent to where my potential right and like where I need to be at. Lay on us the uh, your current stats. Like yeah, how, number of deals, you know, all that. All right, so you know, uh, I'm very thankful that the this year I'm already at twenty. Yep. Uh, seven closed. I have like about uh 13 pending and you know i last year was pretty tough like starting out but i did a lot of follow-up yeah so that follow-up is paying off right now like a lot of the people that said they're not ready eight months ago nine months ago or just told me it's not a good market or you know it's just not the right time they're all coming back around and uh, you know we do online marketing so things are picking up so we're starting to get more of those as well and i just think like buyers are more relaxed now i feel like last year it took me like 10 extra steps just to kind of answer questions nurture comfort come up with different creative ways to like make the numbers don't look as scary as they look right and you know like just try to explain to them like hey this house is worth 550 if you look at 2021 it was in the six seven hundreds but the rates were lower so like you know your rate might be higher but you're paying a lower price point and if the rates come down then you refinance right and then even if i explain that to them some people just not ready or they don't feel comfortable with that right so i was kind of understanding of that yep and that's why i kind of focused a lot on new builds last year because you know i I used to go wake up every morning and then like search which new build has the best incentives for clients like who is going to pay give you a 3.99% interest rate, pay for your closing costs, title policy, have a down payment assistant program, give you a fridge, washer, and dryer. And, you know, these are for first-time home buyers that might have only like $14,000 and they didn't even know they could qualify. But I'm like, hey, let's just go 20 minutes further from the area you're looking and I could get you in a bigger, nicer home with a lower monthly payment. So I did a lot of driving last year. I don't have to buy any appliances. (laughs) Exactly. And a warranty. I always tell, like, I always like, I I don't like when a builder don't give me fridge, washer, and dryer. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, it's just, I'm like, that's just a little, like, every home should just come with that, you know? Like, but I think new builds are doing really great for people because, like, they're spending a lot of money to get these people incentives in a market that was very tough. So I've managed to help a lot of people last year get into homes that they thought they could never buy. 
And this year, I think it's a uh, things are changed. Like these builders are increasing their prices, taking away their incentives. Like I'm starting to get into multiple offer situations. You know, like if there's a good property on the market and it's been like a week or two and we go see it, we like it. I call the agent. They're like, yeah, we have an offer in hand and there's a couple of people might be interested. So like I can't go get my buyers, you know, 10, 15 percent off of the home, you know, and a good rate and, you know, getting their closing costs covered. And that's with the new build on the resale side. Like last year, I was able to go like I think none of my clients paid title policy and closing cost. Cause I'm like where the market is at, like, you know, every property was on the market for 90 to 180 days. They've right. done about 10 price drops. So I've always like kind of, so you had a lot of room to play. Yeah. There. Yeah. Buyers are protected when the rates are higher and it's a buyer's market, you know, like we're able to go there and negotiate, right. You know, and have like wiggle room. I think there's another thing that's interesting. And I don't know, like it's, it's interesting listening to you talk about this from our perspective, because you know, we were listening to sort of the broader real estate community, you know, between, let's say, like 2021, like when the interest rates started to rise. Um, and uh, and there were a lot of people that were like, oh, my God, like the, the party's over. This is the this is the end. Like buyers aren't going to, you know, it seems like that a lot of real estate agents are, uh, are uh, you know, doomsday ish yeah. uh, all the time. Uh, you know, whether it's the, the NAR lawsuit or interest rates rising or whatever, it's like, oh, this is going to be the end, but you're clearly still killing it. Right. I started out in the hardest time. That's what everybody tells yeah. me. And I was like, if that was the hardest time, I'm like the easy time sound hard to me because I'm like, when people were telling me there was like 15, 20 offers on a house and like you're putting $10,000 earnest. I'm like, I really would not feel comfortable selling houses to buyers in that market because they're not protected, you know, like, you know, right. That's what I'm like seeing right now. It's mm -hmm. like a lot of negative energy, like it's doomsday, like Austin is a decline in market, you know, <laughs> realtors are never going to get paid. Again. And I'm like, you know, every time there is change, that means there is an opportunity for you to grow more and make more and overcome it. You know, like when there is a disaster, that's when there is opportunity for new people to become billionaires. Like when the market crashes, that's when there is new millionaires and new billionaires and the people that's had money and they've been comfortable for years and they thought they could never be in that position, you know, are gone. And now there's room for new people. And I'm like, I'm really trying to be the face of the new generation into real estate. Dude. You know? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. You're, I'm loving this because yeah. uh, I totally agree with you. Right. And, and I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Right. So that chaos like creates opportunity for people to disrupt. Yeah. Right. And so whether it's, whether it's again, the NAR lawsuit or, you know, change of interest rates, like the, the people that are fat and happy, are going to get shaken out. Yeah. You know, or or the people that are not serious. And I know? think yeah, I really think like, you know, there's pros and cons. Like there's some cons to what's happening right now, and I think the pro is people will get better real estate services. Hmm. You know, like yes. you said, yep. you know, the ones that are just fat and lazy and they just go and like do the minimum and get people into homes. You know, I feel like I, you know, the stat was like 97% of transaction was done by like 1% of realtors last year. Yeah. So I'm like, I feel like that will kind of give people better services. You know how many people I've talked to and they've had a crappy experience with a realtor and I had to spend like an hour on the phone explaining to them, like, I want to change your perspective and like, I'm not going to do you like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's very common. Right. And I'm just realizing like, we get paid a very good amount of money and like we make our job seems easy because we do so much in the background. But also I feel like sometimes there's some people are not protected and getting the services they need to be getting from a realtor. You know, like we do a lot for people, you know, like. What, what do you think some of those examples are? I would say like stop thinking about like yourself and the commission or, you know, more than the clients. Like for me, I don't like my client paying l list price. Like, you know, and if I drop the price, that affects my commission, but I don't really care. Right. I'm like, you'll be happy. You'll be comfortable, you know, like, and that's what I care about because I want you to move into the house and not call me six months later or a year. And you're like, I'm probably not going to refer you anybody. And I never want to work with you again. I, I just love your attitude of, thank you, of, you know, nothing's going to stop me. And anything turbulent happening inside the marketplace is just 
like opportunity. Yeah, like if you want it, you can make it happen. Like yeah. I come from Iraq, you know, came to America with what, like a hundred dollars, me and my family, and we worked our way up. I've been through so much adversity, you know, like I've had so many challenges and like I've had a bunch of times where I could have just quit and used every single excuse on why I'm not in the position I'm in and like it's somebody else's fault. But if you really want something, you just got to work and go get it. And it's not going to be easy. You know, like most people now they look at me and I tell them like the transactions I do and the work that I'm doing, but they think like it's easy now. Like I've sacrificed time from my personal life mentally, you know, like I am literally just dedicating everything into this and it's not the easiest thing to do, you know, like I don't have a I'm like starting to like realize I need to have a personal life and a balance in my <laughs> life because yeah. I just hit start. And, you know, when I go home at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., I can't my brain does not stop because all I'm thinking about is, you know, like, oh, did I miss something? Am I protected? There's an option period. Oh, can I get this person another like three, four K off? Like I'm in the shower and I come up with like a creative way to negotiate and I have to like go to my phone and I'm like writing notes on like to call this agent tomorrow morning and use that. Well, so maybe just a plug for someone else that's in our community. You know, I think this is a lot of what Todd Tremonte talks about, mm. um, you know, how to how to not just be consumed by your career, but like have a good have a good life outside that. Yeah. Right. But I think that the like listening to you talk and listening to like how this was a major goal for you and how you've been working for it. Like, I think this is a natural place for you. Like, it, it seems like, yeah, this is the phase of your career you're in where you work hard and you build that that solid foundation that you're going to use for the rest of your career. Yeah. Right? I'm like, like I, I don't have kids. I don't have, like, a lot of responsibilities. I just need to grind and exactly. set up a good, you know, foundation. Exactly. That doesn't have a lot of cracks, you know? Right. And <laughs> if the people around you are supporting you in that, then you're – you're going to be, you know, great. Yeah. So I want to come back to like some of the nuts and bolts of like the business that you're running. So where are your leads coming from? You know, because you started from zero and you said you had a few leads yeah. from the bank, but like, you know. My boss, Philip Chang, he's been mm -hmm. doing Zillow for about nine yep. years. Uh, you know, we do Zillow marketing. Uh, so that's how I kind of started. But I, he didn't put me on it right away. You know, right. like, you know, they spend money on it. You know, it's not something that you just put anybody on it. So I was, I took me about three to five months for me to train. Uh, I sat in his passenger seat for three to four months, you know, recorded all his calls and took notes and just shadowed him. Like just, right. it was the best thing for me. And it was during a startup too. So they were in a start, a starting up Modus Real Estate. Amazing place. Yep. If you're looking for a great place, Modus is where it's <laughs> at. <laughs> uh, so we were in the middle of a startup. So like, I was new. They didn't have time for me. Like he told me, he's like, hey, look, like we're making a jump. We're starting a brokerage and there's a lot going on. And I just don't know if I will give you the support you need. Right. And I was like, but I want to be here. So I was like, don't yeah. worry about me. I was like, I will learn. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I will figure it out. Yeah. I just need to be around you. Sounds like you were the right guy for that situation. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, I really, fun I work well in disaster. Yeah. <laughs> when things are, <laughs> when things are easy or things are just like you know, smooth and stuff. I'm just like, and then, you know, he told me no three times before he told me yes. So what I did is I brought him a lead from the bank and I was like, look, I might not have the stats. I might not have all the, any, all the accomplishment of other realtors that deserve to be on the company, but I'm not even licensed yet. And I'm bringing you somebody. Right. And, you know, that was like a, very good way of me bringing him value, you know, like I'm a strong believer in bringing somebody value. You yep. can't just ask somebody for something and not give them something in return, you know? Absolutely. You do good, it comes back to you. Yep. Uh, so we went and did a listing appointment and, you know, after that he was like, yeah, let me set up a meeting with my other business partners and we met at a... And, I met with them like while I was working at the bank and it was at a coffee shop like three minutes down the road from the bank. And I remember that day after meeting with them, I literally told them, I was like, can I quit my job today? <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm ready. Like, I'm just, I want to get into real estate. Yeah. Like I was, I loved working at a bank. Like I yeah. think if I never, you know, got into real estate, I would have stayed there. It was a great place. Uh, but real estate was my calling. Right. So they gave me the opportunity 
And he started out by giving me like a thousand dead lead that goes back to five years, like from Zillow, like, you know, just people that hung up on him, lost touch, you know, it's just, you know, just leads that he has. And he's like, you know what, just take them, do something with it. So I made a hundred calls a day and every day I called that list and I managed to convert about three of those set up appointments. And to this day, I'm still working with a couple of them. What I understood about real estate is just because you call somebody and they tell you they're not ready now and they don't want to buy, it doesn't mean you never talk to them again. It just means they're not ready now. That's right. But if you call them every two to three weeks, you send them properties and you talk about buying a house, then slowly that thought will get into their head, even if they're not thinking about it. You're right. And then, you know, it takes sometimes six months. Sometimes it takes, I put somebody under contract in two hours. Because they were just ready. I went, showed them a house, and then I was like, you know what? I have a better option for you 15 minutes down the road. We went to a new build, and then this dude was just, he was like, yeah, let's go fill out the application. I want to sign a contract. I was like, slow down. <laughs> I was like, this. I was like, great, slow down. Or I have like somebody I've been working with since my first day in real estate, and I'm still working with them, and it's probably going to yeah. take another year. But you need to be there for people through every step until you get to the closing table and even afterwards you know like if there's a freeze just tell them hey cover your pipes uh you know if it's like there's a hailstorm, you know call all your clients that close afterwards and be like hey do you need a roofer you know like you want to be more than just a realtor that gets their commission and give them the gift card and the thank you letter and you know Spears. take the picture yeah. post the you know post it on instagram and then on to the next it's always about the next one, but also you got to keep that connection. Right. Because I'm in the business to helping people and making money. It's like an interesting perspective because on one hand, it's like you've got to have the fortitude to make those hundred dials a day. Yeah. Right. But it's then, tough. but then the perspective to be like, well, actually I'm really trying to help these people like get into homes and, and get them to be like successful homeowners long-term. Yeah. Right. And there are sometimes like where I, you know, I go with people and I just tell them, I'm like, I don't think you should buy right now. I'm like, I don't think it's the right time for you. And I've never pressured anybody to, to go through on a contract, like during the option period. You know, I just had a client where she just was not feeling, you know, like it's time. And I was like, yeah. look, we've done a lot of work. I'm here to support you. Whatever you decide, I'm going to be with you. Like, it just doesn't matter because I'm like, I don't want you to buy this house. And then three months later, you know, like, why did I do this? And it's because I gave you a little nice 30 minute speech, you know, like, no, it's like, I'm going to do my job, give you the numbers, do everything the best that I can. And if that's still not enough, then I don't think it's time. So like, I always like to be with people through every step. I want to be more than a realtor. I want to be the guy they go to for anything, like outside of real estate as well. And I want people to make money because I, the reason I got into real estate is I read so many books and saw so many different documentaries and motivational speeches, and they all talked about the best way to build wealth in America is real estate. And when I got into real estate, I learned about all these, you know, 1031 exchange, the capital gains, the cash out refi, um, you know, build an equity, you know, you take out a cash out refi because it's debt, you don't pay taxes on it and you could pay your kids college and you could, it is like, wow, I could literally help people my age. And that's kind of like the goal that I'm working towards is like my generation, they need to understand that. Yeah. Just because, you know, the baby boomers took all the cash and made everything expensive <laughs> for us. Like, there is ways where we could come in and get creative and build that same financial wealth that they did for themselves. Right. I mean, like, you got you to gotta work with the situation. Yeah. I'm like, hey, you, got, you just graduated college. You got an offer letter. Okay. Let's go. You know, all right, let's go. I'm like, I could get you down payment assistance program. There's affordable housing program. There's USDA. There is new bills. There's all these different programs. And I really want to help like the younger generation get into homes. Well, the other thing that's interesting about you is, you know, I, I think a common thing that we hear well, the, from real estate agents is, oh, I want to work with luxury. I want to work with, you know, the established people I want to. And it's like, yeah, because those are easy, 
right? Mm-hmm. Like really easy. And yeah, I'm, I'm hearing money. that it's like, you're like, okay, I wanted to be in real estate. Uh, I'm not afraid of making a hundred calls a day. And I want to work with the difficult buyers. I love difficult buyers. Like the thing about difficult buyers, I don't think they're difficult. It's just, just think about it. Buying a house is one of the biggest investments most people make 99% out of the time yeah. as their first. So like if somebody worked five, six years to save up money and they've went through so much to finally be in a position to buy a home and they're being picky and they're, you know, they're being very conservative on the prices and all that. Like yep. I am a person, I have emotions. There is things that hold me back. Like I am very difficult with certain things. Like when it comes to my food, I am very, <laughs> I am a, like a very like picky person. So like, I kind of like just under, I like to understand people's needs and I want to be that person like, Hey, I dealt with your BS and I took everything you threw at me, but I still got you through the line. Yeah. But the thing is, is like our business is referral based. So if yeah. I just go do an easy job and people go and talk about, oh yeah, he just showed me two houses and yeah, they talk about buying the home the whole time and they don't bring up the realtor once. I want to be the guy when they speak about in a family function oh, my realtor did this for me. My realtor did this for me. I, it's like me and my realtor. It's not us. Because right. I want it to be us thing, not just you got into the home and you forget about okay, it. Okay, so you, you've done a lot already. And you, you were like very uh, strategic about the way that you got into real estate. But with the benefit of hindsight, what do you think were like the most impactful things at, that – that mattered for you or maybe said another way if you were going to go back and talk to 14 year old self you know like right after that conversation with your first real estate agent and where you realized i want to do this like what would you tell yourself it's like the most important things to do discipline uh i think i was so busy trying to get to my goal that i was going a thousand miles per hour and I kind of lost a few principles that I followed that allowed me to be disciplined, which is like when I was in sports, I used to wake up every day at a certain time, get my workout in, do the same thing, and I stuck with that. But then over time, the more you do, the faster you move, sometimes you start to slip up like, oh, I make 100 calls every Tuesday, let me just do it on Wednesday and Wednesday comes and then you get a bunch of emails, phone calls, and now you push it to Thursday and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And guess what? It's Tuesday now. And now you got to make 200 calls. And that is something that I experienced about like four, six months in when I got into real estate, it's like the amount of discipline you need to be in this industry is so much. And I did not understand that. I thought I was disciplined but this job showed me that there's so much more I need to work on because it's hard. You know, sometimes like you wake up every day at 8 a.m., 7, p- 7 a.m., 6 a.m. And like the first thing you see is four or five mixed calls, three text messages. I want to terminate. Amen. Why do they have a gas furnace and an electric, you know, like and I'm like, oh, immediately start <laughs> texting, immediately start yep. doing that. And then guess what? I forgot to eat my breakfast. You know, I'm, I'm so busy now. I don't want to even work out. Yeah. I go to the office. I don't have nothing in my system. I'm making calls. I'm making text. I'm doing emails. And then, oh, look, it's 2, 2 p.m. And I haven't had nothing in my system. I haven't done nothing for myself. It's kind of like a robot. So, like, I needed to tell, like, learn how to tell myself, like, hey, it's fine for me to take 30 minutes to myself without making a call or text and just focus on myself or like the opposite is like oh i do so much work in a week so i want to take two days off and just like yeah i just put three under contract so (laughs) i don't need to make that many calls today and then next week i'm like why i don't have any under contract why i don't have any hot leads oh it's because i didn't spend two days prospecting last week and that really put me 10 steps back it's like you constantly have to be you know lead generating you know, on top of your shit, like making your calls, your emails. And if you do one thing wrong, it could just explode of chaos. Okay. So 
at the end, we like to ask people, you know, okay, so what question should the audience answer? So like at the end of the episode, it's like, okay, you've listened this far. You've got all the way through. Like, here's my question to the audience. Go put it in the comments. What do you think we should ask them? Do you still want to do real estate after hearing this? That was great. So we got to wrap it up, everyone. We're like right at time, 30 seconds left. Hey, your energy is contagious. You're going to be you. awesome at this. I appreciate like, that. We'll have to have you back on again. I would love to. I'm trying to do more podcasting, but don't have enough time. Tell for people yet. real quick how, how they can find you. Amen the Realtor on Instagram. I'm still trying to work on my social media game, but that's where you could find me or just look me up at Modus Real Estate. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking to buy, sell, invest, or want to get creative on how to get into a home, feel free to reach out. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll catch you in the next one.